John chapter 10 and verse number 11. John chapter 10, verse number 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling. This is Jesus speaking. And cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine or of my sheep. As the Father knows me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life, and I lay down my life for the sheep, the Father and the flock. Lord, we thank you once again for easy preaching and receptive listening and hearing today. People leaning forward in their faith. In Jesus' name, put your Bibles down, hands together, open your mouth one more time, and let's give him praise, shall we? Just as a people, let's give him praise. Just high five about three people and tell them I will receive today in the name of Jesus. 2016, we have already prophetically declared and took note that 2016 is the year of love. The phrase in Hebrew, the Father, is mentioned 16 times in Scripture. We have already stated that. It's imperative that we learn the Father. I'll say that again. It is imperative that we learn the Father. And we will learn the Father if the family matters. The heart of the father, the position of the father, and the art of fathering are missing essentials in this generation. The father has a system. The father has a strategy for his flock. If they follow it, they survive and ultimately succeed. But it's just a matter of adherence to the code of love. Everyone say love. In the father method, he refers to his people as sheep. He refers to himself as the good shepherd. The shepherd is the dominant leadership metaphor in the Old Testament. God's choice of the shepherd as a leadership metaphor made sense because society was so dependent on sheep. And when you read scripture, when Jesus refers to his people, he refers to them as sheep. When you read scripture in the Old Testament, when God refers to his people, he refers to them as his sheep or his flock. Everyone say the flock. Charles Spurgeon said these words, some Christians try to go to heaven alone in solitude but believers are not compared to bears or lions or other animals that wander alone those who belong to Christ are sheep in this respect that they love to get together sheep go in flocks and so do God's people sheep go in flocks and so do God's people all through the Bible God's people again are referred to as his sheep to the point the prophet Ezekiel said in chapter 34 verse number 30 in this way they will know that I the Lord their God am with them 
and they will know that they, the people of Israel, are my people, says the Lord. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the sovereign Lord. David is going to say it like this in the 78th Psalm and the 52nd stanza. But he brought his people out like a flock, and he led them like sheep through the wilderness. He's going to turn around in the 95th Psalm and the 7th stanza and say it like this. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Today, if only you would hear his voice. So powerful. I don't know about you, but the thought of journeying through life with my people is a far better feeling than think I have to sojourn through all my days by myself. The thought that I can rejoice with people that are rejoicing and even the thought of mourning with those that mourn somehow that brings a sense of great satisfaction because in that i feel like i belong to something greater than myself in that we can come up with these kinds of summations if one can put a thousand to flight two can put ten thousand to flight then how many can a whole family put to flight? Let me submit this thought to you. You were not born to wander alone through life. You have assignments. You have associations. You have acquaintances. But then you have connections. And you have a place where you fit. A place where you're significant. A place where you are important. A place where you are identified as a strategic family member. It's very important that this generation understand this because we are fighting many philosophical ideas that no generation before us has had to fight. No, even in Martin Luther King's statement of interrelated reality, we understand that it's important to belong because if you touch one of us, you've touched all of us, and if you touch all of us, you touch one of us. So this thought, even developed in colonialism days, is far from our minds now. Now it's all about the individual, and individuals are being born and led and taught and learned by computers. No social interaction, no communication from one person to another person. You can get your college degree by sitting by yourself at your house. Are y'all with me or am I by myself in this building? I, I would appreciate you talk back to me. It's a beautiful thing when we talk to each other. Amen. I say something you like, you say amen right on. Or if I say something you don't like, you say oh me. But say something to me. Amen. All right. This is a participatory service. I already told you you're not going to be able to take many notes. So that means you have plenty of opportunity to respond. Right on, Bishop. Talk, Bishop. Amen. Bring it. Say that. Talk in the building. All those types of things. Right? So I was reading today about sheep and uh, I found out something very interesting and I remember reading this in 2015 that this happened. That there were some shepherds in Turkey and they left their herd or their flock to go and eat some breakfast and they were very emphatic about we never do this but today we did it. And when they did it, uh, one of the sheep decided this is a good opportunity to make my break. And the one sheep took off running and jumped off of a cliff some hundred feet high. And when that one sheep did it, they sat in amazement and watched 1,500 sheep follow one sheep. 450 of them lost their lives. The rest of them survived by landing on those that were already dead. Hmm. Just because somebody all of a sudden got an independent idea that I don't want to be in this flock no more and just took off running and just jumped off the cliff and committed 
suicide by leaving the very thing that was providing safekeeping for him and the sheep were ignorant enough to follow one dumb sheep to jump off of a cliff. Are y'all in the building right now? Hmm. So it's a result of two things. One dumb sheep <laughs> and five shepherds who decided to take a break. I'll say it again. One dumb sheep and five shepherds who decided to take a break. See, shepherding is not about taking breaks. Shepherding is not about leaving the flock and go and enjoy your taco. No, if you're going to shepherd, you got to stay with your sheep. And this is unpopular preaching today because if you stay with the sheep, then you got to deal with their stuff. Which means you get it on your shoes, you get it on your clothes. You, you have to deal with the sheep. And sheep can be very, very hard-headed. And you got to teach them to follow. And if you're not careful, one dumb sheep can mess up the entire flock. And not only your flock start affecting other flocks because there was five shepherds with 1,500 sheep. And one dumb sheep can mess up your flock and every flock connected to your flock. Now, if the Lord compares his people to sheep, then don't you think we have to learn like sheep learn? I didn't say you were dumb, I said you're educated. Touch your neighbor and tell them, I know you're smart because you're in church today. Just go ahead and touch them there and tell them that. I know you're smart because you're in church today. Isaiah 53, 6 said, all we like sheep have gone astray. All we like what? Sheep have gone astray. We have turned, listen to it, Pastor D, we have turned everyone to his own way. Hmm. We have turned everyone to what? His own way. Independence. Individualism. We have turned everyone to his own way. Reminds me of Judges chapter 17, verse 6, and Judges 21, 25. Both verses say the same thing. In those days, there was no leader in Israel, and every man did what was right in his own eyes. I don't know if we got a shepherd problem or a sheep problem, but we got a problem. Because we got sheep running everywhere and we can't fit and shepherds can't figure out where they supposed to be or what they supposed to be doing. So we got shepherds chasing sheep and sheep ought to be chasing shepherds. Hmm. Interesting. The greatest enemy to the fold and the flock is the mindset of individualism and the spirit of independence. And I'll say that again. The greatest enemy to the fold and the flock is not the wolf. It's the mindset of individualism and the spirit of independence. Even God himself expressed himself in the form that was plural. He is a God of plurality. He is a God of interdependence, not independence. If he wanted to be independent, he would have never shown up as the son. Talk in this building, Bishop. He would have never said, me and my father are one. We're two, but we are one. He would have never expressed himself in the form of the Holy Spirit. Talk to me. So he showed up as sovereign, but he showed up as a son, but he showed up as a spirit. All three, one, but one in three. Why? Because even God himself does not exist in a spirit of individualism and, and independence. Independence is hurting us today. I need you. You need me. Together we survive. Together we succeed. We are better together than we are by ourselves. Two are better than one. For how can one get heat by himself and a threefold cord is not easily broken. I came in here to prophesy not to this church only, but to all churches in America. Get yourself together and learn what it is to be part of the flock. I'm sorry, Pastor D. I'm going to go ahead and preach it like I feel it, though. 
I need me about seven men on this platform real quick. I need about seven men. I didn't even ask y'all. So, you know, just uh, thanks, John. Thank, thank you, Hector. Come on, guys. That's, that's good. David, if you'll join us, I think we'll be all right. Come on, that, that's good right here. And I just want not a single file, just getting a herd, like a flock, like a, you know, don't, not shoulder to shoulder, but just kind of get all up in there like that. There you go. Come here, Kenny. Come here, Kenny. Get in the flock. Y'all all face me if you don't mind. Just face this way all right now. <clears throat> Kenny, I want you to come out. And I want you to go over here and I want you to see him as a sheep among the flock. Now, let me tell you something. Sheep are just like cattle. All cattle, all sheep have herding instincts. They weren't taught that. It is instinctive in them to be with the herd. There is in the cowboy world, Melissa, what we call cutting, right? And a cowboy, come back over here, uh, Kenny, a cowboy will go in the herd, watch this, and he will sort out, this is a sport, he will sort out one. He pushes him out with the horse, the, the animal, the calf in this case, will immediately turn back to what? The to the herd. He's not even concerned about me. He's got one concern in his mind to get back to where he belongs. Are y'all in this building? The sport is that the cutting horse, go that way, mirrors every move that the calf makes so that the cutting horse is being judged on his ability, keep going, to keep him from the flock. Let me tell you something, the enemy knows how to separate you. And he will spend all of his energy in keeping you away from where you belong. Are y'all understanding what I'm telling you? And when you get a hold to one that's wiry enough, Melissa, that calf or that sheep will do whatever it takes to fake me out, to get back to the herd. And the enemy can't do nothing about it. And let me tell you something. It is high time for us to say, I will not let anything keep me from where I Jump on your feet, clap your hands, throw your head back, shout to God and tell him thank you for my flock. Thank you guys. You are fabricated. I'm gonna say it again. You are fabricated to fit in a family. You are fabricated to find your flock. I don't care what society is telling you. I don't care what technology is telling you. I don't care what your school is telling you. You were not born to be independent in this earth. This thing is hurting us. We do not te teach people to socialize and that's why it's so easy for people to get so angry on the interstate when the traffic stops, road rage because everybody's mad because they got their own agenda. You don't even care that somebody may be laying on the side of the road, dying while you sitting there impatient. And it all goes back to the spirit of independence. Every man does what is right in his own eyes. This generation is all about nobody gonna tell me what to do. Nobody gonna tell me how to live. Nobody gonna tell me to go to church. I go to church when I wanna go to church. And that mindset has destroyed us. We've lost Wednesday night Bible studies. We've lost Sunday night services. Now we're down to a Sunday morning service and we have to give out cookies and milk and coffee and bread to even make people come to church, make lasagna and pulled pork just to get people in the house of God. What has happened to this generation? Do we have a shepherd problem or do we have a sheep problem? But we got a problem. And I came in here to adjust the problem in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the body of Christ and I tell you, get back to the principles. Get back to the doctrines of Christ that made us who we are. We are blood-bought, spirit-filled, sanctified people. Come out from among them and be ye separate, says God. I will be to you a God and you shall be to me a people, not a person.